Hello folks and welcome back to the Keep Productive YouTube channel. Today we will be checking out an application called Obsidian. Now Obsidian is a Rome research competitor and it allows you to build a personal knowledge base inside of the application. Now it includes some of the features that Rome has and it's gaining a lot of attention right now in the productivity space. So folks, in today's video, we're gonna dive into Obsidian and give you all the information you need to know. Before we roll into our Obsidian review, here's a little bit about our sponsor, ClickUp. So folks, this month here on Keep Productive is one of my highly recommended project management tools and that is ClickUp. Now ClickUp is one of the fastest growing productivity and project management platforms in the last two years and it's only been around for two years. They already have millions of users and over 100,000 teams are using them at the world's best companies like Google, Airbnb, Uber and Nike. Now teams traditionally use spreadsheets, email, chat and many project managers but there's a big trend towards teams using just one application. Most teams replace three or more apps just by switching to ClickUp. So that process in itself, moving into one application, saves teams so much time. Now ClickUp has features like tasks, docs, and goals to keep organized in one place and have fewer meetings, emails, and daily switches between multiple applications. And it's perfect for all types of teams, from two to 2,000, and from farming projects to even building aeroplanes. On top of that, they have an extremely generous free forever plan. You can literally add unlimited users and unlimited work to their app for free. So guys, you can find out more about ClickUp below. I recommend checking them out. They also do have a Just Me plan if you wanted to switch to some of your own personal work too. So thanks again to ClickUp for sponsoring this month here on Keep Productive. Now Obsidian sort of came out of nowhere. It is a quarantine project, which essentially means it was done under quarantine. So here we are on the Obsidian webpage, and as you can imagine, they're starting to market themselves as a second brain. Let's just overview some of the details. This is an application you can download on Mac, Windows, Linux App Image, and Linux Snap. Now, unlike Rome, Obsidian allows you to download the application and use your local folder to utilize plain text markdown files. So this is perfect for offline use and being able to utilize it on the go. Now, the first time I actually checked out Obsidian was on Matt Laker's channel, and it was a great overview of how it works, and I'll definitely include it in the link in the description. So Obsidian is actually created by the folks who developed Dynalist. Now, if you don't know, Dynalist is an outliner application that has some Rome-like features. However, Erica Zhu and Shida Lee I hope the pronunciations are right with that, actually developed this whilst being in quarantine. So it's quite interesting to see their expertise being brought over to a new age application. So their mission with Obsidian is to create a local first and plain text note taker with Link as the first class citizen and to make it super extendable. So before we dive in, let's dive into the pricing. Now you can actually download Obsidian for free. That's for personal use. It doesn't require an account or sign up and even allows you access to the plugins and API. Now that's a forever pricing, but if you wanted to go to the catalyst pricing, that includes early access for insider builds, special badges in the community, and is a $25 plus one-time payment. And that allows you to support the development of the application. There's also a commercial model, which means that you can use it in commercial use and you can contact them for volume discounts. That is $50 per user per year. So whilst Obsidian is currently only available offline and through your local storage on your devices, it actually is planning to add these add-on services called Sync and Publish. Sync includes end-to-end -end encryption, built-in version history and priority email support, and that costs you $4 per user per month, but means you can connect it all online. They'll also plan to have a second add-on called Publish, which is a hosted knowledge base, selectively published notes, and team collaboration. And that'll be at $8. At, and that'll be at $8 with their early bird pricing when they plan to release it. So in essence, you can download this for free without any issues. 
Now, it's already really interesting to go over to their Twitter and find out all the people that are using and utilizing Obsidian, and many people are taking full advantage of it in the same context that Rome is being used. There are these graph abilities where you can actually visualize all of your notes and all of the connections between them. So folks, as you can see, this is what appears when you get Obsidian, and do remember this is a beta version. Now when you open up the Obsidian application, you can see here that I've got an option to open folder as vault, create a new vault, or open help vault. In this case, I'm probably going to create a new vault, but if you had a bunch of markdown files that you're already using, say you're using an application like Bear Notes, or even an application like Ulysses, you could open this folder that has an existing set of notes. So in this case, I don't have that, so I'm gonna go ahead and create a new vault. Now you can give it a name, so in this case, I might call it My Notes, and I'm gonna pick a location to place the vault. And I've opened up the help page, which allows you to see all of the useful notes that the team have created to help you get started with your Obsidian account. Now, as you can imagine, we're just going to show you some of the basic bank linking and the ability to create some of the pages. However, there is much more detail that I do want to show you in a more advanced feature. Okay, so here we are inside of Obsidian, and I'm going ahead and create a brand new note. And as you can imagine, very simple to create a note. It's in Markdown, so it's fairly easy if you understand those terms. I'm going to start a uh, a note on the Kevin Hart podcast that I've recently listened to, and I'm going to go over and copy some of these notes from Dynalist, which again will copy over in Markdown very, very easily. Now, the way I almost sort of confirm what everything looks like is I press preview, and as you can see, it comes up as a pure note. Now, let's touch on how you can start getting those backlinks in, and it is really easy to do this. All you have to do is say I wanted to mention that this was featured on the Tim, Fer Tim Ferriss podcast. I could say like this, and I use these two brackets here, and as you can see, Kevin Hart's already a page, so all I'd have to do is type in Tim Ferriss podcast and went ahead and clicked it. And as you can see here, it does it fairly easily. Now, what I'm going to do here is actually press Command on the Mac, and I'm actually just going to click it. And as you can see, it enters as its own page. Now, if I want to, I can open these two pages up at the same time. I can go and press Command, Enter, and you can see that horizontally, I can stack these. But if I wanted to, I could horizontally split them as well. So you're almost creating additional um, notes at the same time, making this sort of like panel view, which is very cool, especially when you've got these connections set up. Now, if I go and close this, you can see that there, if I click into the backlinks area, that on the right hand side, the backlinks connect up with the Kevin Hart podcast. And I can actually click in and see that at any given time. I can also see unlinked mentions as well. So this is a great way to start building out some of your notes. Now, if I wanted to later on actually go ahead and create a brand new note for a podcast on essentialism, and I wanted to do the same thing to be featured on Tim Ferriss podcast, and I also want to say um, the previous episode was... Kevin Hart. There we go. I have some form of connection there. And if I'm inside of this, you won't see any backlinks show. But if I went to the Tim Ferriss podcast, I've got two backlinks related there. And if I wanted to be able to utilize or demonstrate the unlinked mentions feature, I could say Tim Ferriss. So you can see there that I featured the Tim Ferriss podcast asking him some great questions. And I can see that reference there. So you can start to see that the backlinks help you to find useful notes, and it does go a lot further than that. If I were to go to the graph view, which is the magic and the sort of relationships that you can build, you can see there that Tim Ferriss podcast has connected up all of these, Essentialism and Kevin Hart, 
and that's very helpful. But if I wanted to get rid in real time and I wanted to go back into the graph view, you can see here that the Tim Ferriss podcast pops up and the relationship looks a very much different. You can see more branches come out because I haven't connected up the essentialism and the Kevin Hart feature. Now, what's really neat is if I was, say, studying, opened up a branch and I wanted to open up, say, the Kevin Hart feature and the essentialism feature at one time, I can just hold down command and quickly create that while still seeing the graph view if I wanted to. So these work as almost like tabs that you would have on the internet. Now you can go ahead and create folders and also change the sorting to A to Z, new to old, um, when you're creating your notes, which is fairly easy to do. And there is a markdown imported too, but there is real magic inside of the settings area when you can go over and find the file or, or the plugins. And you can see here that you can add a few, for example, search, some of the backlinks, and you can even add things like the tags that you create, which will come on to the more advanced feature, the page preview. Um, so this is, for example, I'll show you this in a moment. Um, you can even see the starred frequently used files. So that can come up when you're inside of there. So very similar to how shortcuts work. And even daily notes. So if you want to open a daily note to create a new one. And even the Zettelkasten prefixer, which is a 12-digit note, which can help create um, new notes using this sort of format. There is also a audio recorder and I do want to show you how you can get started with your image uploads. So if I want to do any given time bring in a uh, actual image that I can use you can see there that if I dragged it in and I was inside of the preview version so if I get rid of some of these of this one you can see that it actually appears as a big image in full size. So you can actually add images so when you're inside of the note, that's how the image appears, which makes it much easier to start typing the notes away. And you may also notice that the JPEG feature is mentioned here too. So a moment ago, I actually went and created um, or went into the plugins area and activated this thing called Daily Notes. Now, if I opened up today's note, you can see a brand new note is created with the today's date. And I can start typing away a few things that may be coming up in the day. For example, I could be saying uh, journal entry for today. I could be saying listen to essentialism. So if I want to, I can change the date format as well. If I was someone that wanted the day, the month, and the year, which is common in the UK. I can even change the file location of the daily note if I wanted to have a specific location and also wanted a template file. So I used the same template over and over again. So as you can see here, I started making some notes here and I can maybe connect up the podcast too to this one. And if I went over to the graph, you can see here that now the graph has a relationship between these two. So I can see that on this day, I have, for example, Tim Ferriss podcast and essentialism all ready to go. So if I were, for example, looking to plan or maybe listen to the Tim Ferriss podcast and take some notes as I was going across my day, I could press command and enter and actually start taking some notes on essentialism, but would continue to actually start making a to-do list for the day. So as you can imagine, they don't have some of the checklist abilities that you would get inside of Rome Research, but it still provides you with a good way to maybe go and plan your day ahead. You can, for example, begin to use the markdown to add all of the details that you need, but they are probably planning to add a bit more later. So if I ever wanted to switch over to a certain note that I was trying to find, I can use the quick switcher, which allows me to quickly switch between applications. And as you can see, if I open up the Tim Ferriss podcast now, I have multiple links created because I've essentially got the ability to see into the Kevin Hart podcast, etc., and in much more detail. Now, earlier, I actually created something called a starred inside of the plugins area. If I go and press starred, you can see that it was successfully starred. And if I go up to here, it's essentially a way to get those shortcuts that you can get inside of your application. So if I went into open, uh, so if I went into all the notes that I have created, I can go ahead and delete this one because it's irrelevant now. But if I went ahead and starred the most recent note that I've created there, I could start working on that here. 
So folks, this is a super basic overview of Ascidian. I really want to dive into much more detail. This is much more of a beginner's opener to those who are looking at the application and definitely my first full introduction to the application. But in time, I'm definitely gonna be playing around with this. It looks really neat the way that this is built offline. I think that's one of the most attractive elements of it, that you can actually use it locally through your storage instead of necessarily having to worry with syncing it to the cloud. Many weeks ago, Rome actually shut down based on this, but this is something that doesn't have that problem. This is based on your computer's quality and naturally has tons of customizable abilities. You can actually go ahead and change the theme if you wanted to. So I definitely will be playing around with this. As you can tell, I definitely need uh, much more experience inside of an application like this. I'm totally new to the whole concept of directional links. It's gonna take me a bit of time and coming back from paternity leave whilst Rome exploded and now Obsidian is here, it's definitely gonna give me some time to jump into these applications and really explore. So folks, hopefully you enjoyed that overview of Obsidian. It's a very interesting application and something that I will be testing out for a couple of weeks now as my own and basic note-taking application. So I'll give you more an advanced guide and plan to bring in a couple of users who are taking full advantage of all of the features. So folks, thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed this feature and let's continue to dive into more productivity resources. Anyway, folks, thank you very much and I'll talk to you all very soon. Cheers, everyone. Bye.